Okay, so I am delighted to welcome our speaker, Georgia Pecora, to our meeting tonight. Georgia is a professional certified astrologer, writer, artist, consultant, and teacher. Her astrological approach is influenced by her studies in theosophy, somatic work, and shamanic practices. Uh, Georgia has studied at uh, the London Centre of Psychological Astrology, um, also with Frank Santoro from the Provisional Institute of Astro Shamanism. She studied Neo Shamanism at the Foundation for Shamanic Studies and Ritual Practices with Ancestral Medicine. Georgia holds an MA in Astro Genealogy from the School of Systemic Therapy. I hope I get this right, Astro Constello Astro Constellationes, under the guidance of Cecilia Garcia Robbins. I know that Georgia has a passion for sharing her knowledge and since founding her school in 2017, she's worked with over 200 students. Uh, her teaching methods are fun, enriching, dynamic and very communi community orientated. Uh, Georgia loves bringing embodiment experiences to astrology using masks, shamanic practices and astrological rituals and she offers rather wild residential retreats for that purpose. Georgia specialises in karmic dynamics, shadow work, relationship astrology and astro genealogy, hence the topic for her talk to us tonight. You can find more information on her website. I'll pop that into the chat in a moment. Um, however, meanwhile, um, a very warm welcome to you, Georgia, and over to you. Wow. Wow, Gillian, thank you. This presentation time is always like, what should I do here? Anyway, so I'm one of these weird astrologers that is, is working with different yeah, energies. So let's put it that way. Saying that, if you want to know more about me, Gillian said it all, you can check my website. We just have one hour. I want to tell you lots of things. So let's, let's just go straight to the important stuff. So past lives. Great. Um, the idea is in the next hour, I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to bring up some ideas. I'm going to ask you a couple of things. I would love you to engage in the chat. If you have any questions, I'm just going to check every five, seven minutes. So it's just not me like just throwing information at you for one hour straight. So everything that comes up, please bring them in and let's look at this together. So past life and relationship astrology. So this is what happens when we are putting two charts together, right? Cool. So let's start, let's do a bit of a step back. Let's think about the definition of karma because here we are talking about past lives, connections, it's a different way to say karmic connections. So in order to understand what karmic connections are about, we need to have a common understanding of what karma could be. This is explained from a rather Western perspective. So I studied like Western astrology, evolutionary astrology. Uh, if we're talking about karma, probably with a Vedic astrologer is going to bring a bit of a different interpretation. So for the sake of this uh, of this talk, the way in which we see karma has to do with action. So we have rather like positive or less positive or less complex relationships. Because usually when we think about karma, I notice with lots of my students, I notice lots of my clients, that we think about something that is negative in its own definition, right? So this is something you could ask yourself. When you hear about karmic encounters, twin flames, soulmates, what is your general feeling about that? So, of course, for that, I mean, you are part of this talk. Another common agreement is reincarnation. So we, we are coming back with certain baggage, with certain energy, and we're meeting over and over again. Um, and the, then the question is, okay, if there are some things that we accumulated from previous lifetimes, what do we do about them in this lifetime? Well, there is something that we want to complete. The fact that there are some processes that haven't been completed in the previous lifetime does not mean that they have to finish in this lifetime. Because again, when we're thinking about completing something, it's like, okay, Georgia, so I'm completing this karmic relationship. This means that it's over. This may be the case. It doesn't have to be the case every single time. Is that clear for everyone? Cool. Amazing. Now, when we're looking at the sinus tree, 
and working with karma, um, how how do we recognize this these relationships? Uh, psychic connections. There is a certain sense of longing, you know, especially with counseling when we're working with karmic uh, relationships and we're working with clients that are dealing with a karmic relationship. We realize that there is something that is bigger than than our understanding. You know, sometimes we're talking to a friend, they're like, oh, Georgia, you know, that's a red flag. That's not maybe something that is good for you, but we are working with the unconscious. So there is this is something, especially the very beginning. Ah, the attraction is that it's so strong, it's so beautiful. I never experienced this before. So this is when we're relating with karma. Uh, karmic relationship also does not mean uh, love, intimate relationships. So the same can apply siblings relationship, parents, child relationship, uh, neighbors, uh, teacher, students. So we can apply this to any relationship. Okay. Both people are going to be affected by other people's emotions and thoughts, but this is not usually a horizontal relationship. So there is a certain level of verticality. This is very important. This is the main point of working with past lives and astrology. We tend to think that when we are in a karmic relationship is in this direction, but usually it's in this one. So it's really important to do a work in which we determine who is bringing what to the table, why, and how can we balance that? Yeah? Again, something is not clear, just write it in the chat. Today, we're going to work with six elements that have to do with the sign of three. The overall chart in general is karmic. There are different karmic elements that we can extrapolate from a chart. But when we are put two charts together and someone comes and is like, George, I would love to know. I had this feeling this guy was my husband in a previous lifetime. How can we see that? So these are the first three and most important elements. Moon nodes, vertex, and Saturn. So we're just going to explore them one by, one by one. I was also bringing the example of previous lifetime and partnership. We are not interested in defining exactly what the story was about. Because usually when we're looking at past lives, everyone is having this amazing crisis. So no one was a peasant. No one is just like we're working on the fields. But that's not the point. What we're interested in is the feeling that we are carrying with us, okay? So if in a previous lifetime, uh, let's say Gillian and I were together uh, prisoners because we are fighting against the system, what we are interested in, Gillian, I could totally imagine that like, happening. Anyway, um, in this lifetime, we are carrying with us this common feeling of being in a prison, okay? Then... Of course, if you're working with a psychic, we just cannot reach that. We can channel things. What matters to the present moment is the feeling. Because if you're working, everything we work with in astrology, despite we know that time is non-linear, has to be in service of our present. So if we're just living in the past, yeah, but this is the way it is, then astrology is not useful anymore. So moon nodes. So the moon nodes, they go beyond the idea of planets. So it's it's a metaphysical, it's a faded aspect. The vertex, maybe some of you are not familiar with that. So I'm just going to break down for you. And with Saturn, I mean, we know that's the Lord of Karma. Whatever course I'm teaching, Saturn is always there. It's always having its own module. So there's no, there's no kind of astrology that is escaping from the powers of daddy, grandpa Saturn. Okay. So let's we'll start with the notes. Um, I don't know which level are you. So I assume that it's always good to start from like a beginning level. So for some of you that are pro, apologies, probably going to listen and get to something you already know. For those who don't know, welcome on board. So when we're working with the notes, the notes are these two nice things here. So there are usually two of them. If you're loading your chart on astro.com, you probably just will manage to see one because there is an option to add a second one. But it's quite easy to determine the two nodes. Like, let's say if your node is always 180 degrees. So if your node is a one degree of Leo, your south node is going to be one degree of Aquarius. You cannot that wrong. Amazing. So they are not planets. The lunar nodes, moon nodes, nodes of destiny, uh, this is usually something else my students like, what is the difference between lunar nodes and moon nodes? 
no difference. It's just to just to bring like different different names to that. Uh, so these are the points in which the moon and the sun are crossing path. Okay, so these are two opposite parts of the story. They are exactly opposite to each other. They are part of the same axis. These two are not separate. Now. When we're working with the South Node, the South Node is a memory, is a feeling of a former success, failure, achievement. It's lots of things. When we're looking at the North Node, the North Node is an energy towards we want to go to in order to understand our destiny in this lifetime. Let's expand a bit on this because there are, there are several misconceptions about the nodes. Um, so when you look at the South Node in your natal chart, and when you look at the sign of the South Node, when we're working with this on a karmic level, it's interesting, like my South Node is in Virgo. I'm always surrounded by strong Virgo people with moon or sun between 22 and 25 degrees of Virgo, where my, my, where my South Node is. So nothing new there. But lots of literature, karmic literature says that we should get rid of the South Node. You know, you just like the things that are going on with the house, just, just let them go, just release them. We have to think that this is all knowledge, all things that we accumulated from previous lifetimes. So do we want to just to get rid of really everything? The question is, instead of getting rid of how can we bring this out? in a way that is useful for us in this lifetime. We see the difference here. So we don't want to disengage from this part of the chart. We want to include this in the journey with our North Node. Also here, looking at the sign of your North Node, looking at the house of your North Node. This is gonna give you some indication of energies that you may need to get some work. I got North Node in Pisces. So being around Piscean people or people with a strong Neptune, can help you to get there. How do we integrate this? Let's let's bring like one quick example. Let's say I got a first house north node, right? So the idea is like doing my own thing, just like taking the stage. The more I do that, the easier seventh house relationships are gonna be. So don't look, for example, a south node in the seventh house of like, oh, you used to have a relationship in previous lifetime and this lifetime I'm just going to be alone. No. But it's very important that in order to process and digest the things from the north node, we have to keep on doing this dance, okay? When this is not clear, the universe does something. It brings some people your way with some elements of your south node or your north node. So this is where these people just pop up, okay? hope this makes sense. Again, please write in the chat. I'm going to take a look at that. So with the notes, I want to... This is the one in which we're going to find some definition for each placement because this is really, really important in terms of past lives. So when we're working with the sun and the nodes, for sure there is like the same with the moon. So with the sun and the moon, I mean, there are like two of the main pillars of our chart. So there is a familiar trigger, like these are people with whom there was some very intense, strong encounter, like something that has to do with your presence, with your ego, your personality is that again. OK, so when the sun is in connection with the node. There is a sense of recognition that is coming towards us. This person sees us and they, they could see some things that we still need or they may see some things that we want to get rid of. OK. So if the sun is in a strong connection, strong connection meaning conjunction with the south node, um, we have a familiar pattern that we are repeating. And this could be a bit challenging. Now, then the question is, if you ask myself the question, I give myself the answer. Okay, Georgia, so what you're saying then, if, if the sun is in conjunction with the north node in Sinus Tree, this person is a great person for us. Maybe. Because like there are two ways to look at that. Because when the sun is in connection with the north node, you have to think that the, the planet person is bringing the energy to you. It's a messenger. That's how we can look at that. So let's say my North Node is in Pisces in the first house. Someone with the sun in Pisces just comes in my life. And that sun is like, look, 
just just follow me you know i'm just gonna give you some tips and tricks to get there so usually the planet person is the one that is delivering a certain type of message okay now once this message is delivered sometimes then the relationship serve its purpose and then we need to let it go and this is usually a mistake that lots of people have in understanding the process it's like yeah but you know i got this planet in conjunction with the north node so i thought this would be forever and ever when we're working with nodes we're working with a different timeline so we have to do a bit of an exercise to stay in the present moment okay so there is common line purpose this person sees something about us beautiful we can keep on growing together when we're working with the moon mm, I mean, with the moon, we have lots of intensity because also from previous lifetime, the moon has one connection to the soul. We can get a bit lost on each other because the moon has this level of intensity that sometimes is a bit difficult to deal with. When we're working with the notes, we're working with these metaphysical concepts. Yeah, so we could get like emotions just could completely take over. So especially for people that have like strong hair, a strong water in the chart or strong Neptune in the chart, it could be a bit more difficult to align because you see, when we are looking at these aspects, we always have to look at them in the context of your own natal chart. Because if I have, uh, I don't know, a North Node in the first house in Aries and four planets in Aries, and someone with the sun is coming, that is something I'm already comfortable with. So if you're going to deliver me a message, I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah, cool, bro. I've seen that. Let's do this together. With someone that has a difficult understanding of their own North Node in their own natal chart, it could be more difficult. Because when we work with sinistry, now we're going to look at a couple of examples. Main mistake is always one and only. People come to me and it's like, oh, look, I got this sinistry with this person. We need to look at the single charts first. Half of the work is your own natal chart. The sinistry is just the result of your inner story. Okay? So when we're looking at the moon in connection with your south node, trauma bonding. So what is trauma bonding? Trauma bonding is a word that we use to define people that are connected by traumatic stories. So something traumatic about your past or something traumatic about your childhood. So some parental, some mommy issues, some daddy issues. They quite get away here. So it's very important to observe what is the dynamic between the two of you? And if there is something repeating from that dynamic between your parents or the parents of the other person, and we're going through these ups and downs, yeah, because it's the moon. What it has to do with the North Node? The moon person is helping the node one to understand and read their own emotions. Not the easiest of the goal, but quite rewarding. Okay, so just gonna look at the ch -ch 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 -ch, something in the um, so natal squares or squares by transits, but mm, uh, the thing is, when we're having a square, that's that's a completely different conversation. So, when we're having a planet that is making a square with one node, automatically it's making a square also to another node, right? Because there are 180 degrees. So, if I'm having like Saturn, it's making a square, it's making another square. This is something that is called planets at the bending of the nodes. So this is a skip step. There is something that you have to go through in order to understand something else. So it helps resolve karma. It's just a bit more complex. Um, because, yeah, when we look when we look at the squares, that, that's an entire talk, to be honest with you. So the thing is, when you are having a square in Sinistry, this person is acting as a bridge between the nodes, okay? So there is something they represent as an archetype that is triggering for you. So if we are talking about the moon-south node conjunction, uh, there is this mommy issues, this thing that comes up. When we are having a square, there is something about the feminine that we see this person as an archetype that we process through them and then we move to the other side. You see the difference? Is a different kind of process. So when it's a conjunction, it's more involved. When there is a square, represents some sort of archetype. Making a bit of sense, yeah? Okay, if not, just, just write it in the chat. Um, 
when we are looking at Mercury with the nodes, um, I mean, with Mercury, it's a bit easier because Mercury is a psycho bomb naturally. So it, it loves to move among worlds, right? So we want to learn from each other. We have a teacher-student dynamic many times. Um, when there is a connection with the South Node, we can point to where the other person is blocked. Because you see here, actually having a planet on the South Node is quite positive. So again, we have to see the qualities of the planets because if we know that that's a messenger, when we have a Mercury South Node, the person is like, look, have you conceded that? And you might have this feeling like, I feel we had this conversation before. Maybe you did. On the other end, on a rather more complicated level, eco chamber. Like maybe ideas are not moving there. On the North Node side, I have lots of these aspects with people I am mentoring, either Mercury or Jupiter ones. They read like we are speaking the same language or we can do some research together, or I could be a messenger for you to meet someone else that is going to help in your path. Yeah, so it's very cool with someone with whom we have some strong Mercury North Node connection. Just go out there. Just go out there and just spread the energy. With Venus, it gets a bit messy. It's quite fun. It's also a bit messy. There is a bit more. I mean, we, we're bringing some sexual tension here. So probably there was some loving, love connection in a previous lifetime. The relationship status could get a bit confusing. So it's always interesting when people are coming for sessions. You know, it's just like, how do you define this relationship? What do you want from this relationship? Do you imagine this person to be, I don't know, your husband or your wife, which kind of, Relationship constellation, do you imagine? Confusing, yeah. Um, my best friend, my Venus, it's on his note. So, and it's it's very, because people kind of, they don't manage to grasp. It's like, are they, are, are they a couple? Are they siblings? Are they friends? And we look like we are married, couple, like, yeah, it looks like we've been married for 50 years. We are at this point in which, nothing like sexual ever happened between us but i know just like you know when we go out eating burgers he's doing these weird things with the bun you know and that would be there like i know i even know it's his food you know that kind of relationship and that's a venus venus south node north node connection that is there so with the south node there is a sense of comfort but it's also a relationship that is coming from the past Hmm. So then the question here is, I mean, there are several questions here. Okay, Georgia. So then if I meet someone with whom I have this connection and it's on the South, no, that shouldn't be with them. Then we always have to look at all the aspects in the chart, in the chart first. The best thing we could do here, we want to observe if you are in a relationship loop. This could be the case. What does it mean? I've been with three different people. Every time, um, I don't know, I'm the third wheel. They're always married. And I meet them and I'm always the one that is keeping like, you're meeting this new person. This one, uh, this one is different. And then guess what? They are married as well. So we want to observe if there is a certain kind of narrative there. If it's there, can we change it? Because some something with Venus South Node, that there is usually a practical issue in this lifetime. Love is there, South Node. But what do we do with that? I had a relationship like that with someone that lived really up north. And it was like, you know, you want to live in your country. I don't want to move to your country. That's, that's it. Like there is a certain level of discrepancy between what you feel and how this applies in the environment. When we're looking at the North Node, it's what I call the cheerleader, the cheerleader aspect. So the universe is bringing you someone telling you, I believe in you, you got this. And again, this could be long, also could be short, because maybe this person was there in that moment in time to support you in doing a certain kind of step. So it's a dharmic encounter because when we talk about karma, we go karma, we go dharma. So dharma is when we accumulate some nice points on the way. Um, 
so we can explore also different ways of love other people you know like greeks i think they found like seven different ways to define the word love that we're thinking like about agape and this thing, unconditional love the love between a parent and the child and the love between lovers like with venus and the north we are expanding our awareness of what love could be ah Mars, completely different thing. So with Mars, so while we're working with malefics, Mars, Saturn, Pluto, and we're working with karmic aspects, the interpretation get a bit traditional somehow. You know, just like there is a certain level of harshness there. Because yeah, it could be passionate, it could be magnetic, but it's also quite confrontation, confrontational because the universe brought someone to give us a kick in the... That I mean... It could be stimulating, also it could be a bit annoying. So there is a physical activation there. With the South Node, we have an anger from a past life that we need to process something hasn't been expressed. Resentment has been there. There is a war that needs to hand. But again, we look at the natal chart because maybe Mars South Node, it's my South Node, but Natalie, I have also Mars in Cancer. So this idea of bringing this anger up is not really, really exciting. So another trick here is that when you look at the planets, this is for the more advanced ones here. When you're looking at the planets, also look at the condition in your own natal chart. Let's say my Mars is in conjunction with your south node. Look where is Mars and the south node in your own personal natal chart. See how that relates with your relationship. What is the status of your natal Mars? Is having a great time? Is having a difficult time? When it's on the North Node, like here, there is something about giving some energy back. There is this evolutionary process that this person can help you to start. Okay, so it's a different kind of cheerleading. You know, Venus one, of course, is a bit kinder. Then we go Jupiter. With Jupiter and the notes, and then I'm going to read if there is something in the chat. Mm. So with Jupiter and Chiron, because, I mean, they're, na they're, they're unnatural karmic energy within them so here there is a spiritual connection that is quite strong and there is a wisdom that is already there so whatever whatever position jupiter is making in relationship with the notes is probably the easier to navigate because we are just question we are questioning the society in which we are we're questioning the things that we are doing um if it's in connection with the south node there was some cultural exchange in a previous lifetime or even more there is an old teaching that needs to be reviewed so very important here to understand what is the power relate the power dynamic in this relationship because if i'm having a jupiter south node connection to with one of my students great if i'm having a jupiter south node conjunction with my partner Let's be careful here yeah, and not fall into the trap of, I'm going to be your therapist. I'm going to help you with your issues. Just let me know what's wrong today. Like, yeah, but there is still a dharmic connection. When it's connected to the North Node, there is a spiritual and karmic journey that we want to explore together. So the person can channel, can channel and bring consciousness to you. And, and... We want to redefine authority. Why? Because Jupiter and Saturn, they kind of work together, right? When Saturn is bringing like some sort of blockage, Jupiter is bringing this, this expansion in terms of karma. So there could be something about like, yeah, finding you new teachers, finding your own voice or the person just helping you and supporting you in your own journey of becoming a teacher. Okay, so then we go conjunct the notes in sinus tree. So, of course, we want to see if it has to do with the same age or not, because, like, if people were born more or less at the same time, they have very similar notes. In that case, I wouldn't dig too much into it. When there is a combination that have to do with a different, uh, like you have, for example, inverted notes, then there is something that we are exchanging here. It's also quite triggering, usually. It's very, very attractive at first. It gets a bit difficult later. But it's about trying again to understand how this relationship can become horizontal. Because both nodes want to give something to the other one and not recognizing that there is a certain level of verticality. So it's very important to understand who gives, who takes in this specific uh, 
uh, mid Devon South Node. So when we're talking about the axis, when we're talking about ascendant descendant, IC and MC, I mean, this is the natural structure of our chart. So here we have people that are delivering messages to us, but since there are points, you know, when we're working with points and planets, I would say it's probably a bit more external rather than internal. Let's say Jupiter North Node to someone that is helping you to do your own course, North Node uh, or South Node be Devon. This person can create like a situation in which some of your karma can be released. Yeah. So we go like situation environment versus personal dynamics. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. South node wisdom seems to be about reconciling emotional energy with the planet archetype. Yes, very good. Um, so, Saturn. Saturn. I mean, Saturn. With Saturn, it's never easy. This is something that you find a lot in parental, parent-child relationship. And it's even more interesting when the child is Saturn and the parent is the node. Because you would think it's usually the opposite way around. But again, this linearity of this hierarchical structure that we have is not necessarily how it works in the upper world. Because on a soul level, we could be like older. This doesn't mean it's the same with your, with your age that you find your driving license. So when we're having, for example, a child that's having Saturn on the notes of the parent, this child is bringing a teaching for the parent. So it's important to, for example, in, the, in this case, if someone comes for a reading to explain the parent, which kind of responsibilities do you have to deal with since, like, how was this relationship with this child? Did you want this child? What did you have to leave behind? Do you have any regrets? How can you deal with it? And so on and so forth. So this relationship has the purpose to help both people to become better, better version of themselves. Not in a fun way, because Saturn is not about fun. I mean, you know, we could try to sell some planets in a more or less cute way, but I mean, Saturn. So we want to be careful about not repeating some oppressive script. But the main topic here is boundaries, because there is, there is something that is repeating. It's from the past. It's karmic. It's heavy. This is my business. This is yours. What has to do with the North Node? This person, again, can help with the discipline, very typical boss situations, blah, 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 is not necessarily positive. So again, when we're looking at the North Node, we Mars, yeah, it could be triggering after sometimes because, you know, Mars could be judgmental. Saturn, same thing. So it's a place in which we need to cultivate patience, yeah? Then how, when this ends, it could be by transit, it could be by progression, it could be because it's just like your body cannot deal with that anymore and just shuts down. Um, then we go Uranus. So we have this previous strong attempt to change our destiny. You know, there, there is something we are going beyond time and space because when we are working with transpersonal planets, we are breaking this time rules that we have. So we are not here to have all the same evolutionary lessons. You know, some people are having incredible experience about the lifetime, some other people a bit less. But when there is a connection between Uranus and the nodes, there, wa there was an attempt, and here we are again. So there is a car, what I love to call a karmic rebellion here. Just like, it's, it, you see, there's a difference with, with South Node. It's like, yeah, you know, we were fighting before, we're gonna fight again. Because there is something about the status quo that we want to break. Yeah? With the North Node, we are really helping this person to change their life or to leave their past behind. Uh, it's quite stimulating. Not always easy. Again, you look at the onnatal chart because maybe, you know, let's say my North Node is in Gemini and Uranus is in conjunction to that. And I'm an Aquarius, Aquarius Ascendant. I'm already speaking Uranus language. Amazing. But if maybe this you have this conjunction with some of these a double Taurus with a moon in Cancer, it may take a bit longer to process this Uranian energy. Yeah. And then we got Neptune and Pluto. So with Neptune, uh, very unclear, uh, as usual, because it's Neptune. 
I mean, Saturn has a bad reputation, but I'm always very wary of Neptune, to be honest, because at least with Saturn, we know what we're working with. With Neptune, there is some sort of healing that we want to bring. So usually both people are quite confused. So you see also you're in terms of guidance. It's not necessary that Nep because what is the message of Neptune? You know, let's have this image of the planet going to the point. Neptune going to your south node and be like, I have a message for you. Like a whisper <laughs> or a piece of poetry. And you're like, great, what I'm supposed to do with that. So Neptune could be a bit cryptic, right? Um, but important practical thing you want to do in this lifetime has to do with practicality. Because we could go into this idolized version. Oh, we want to do, like, had this client some time ago, this couple that wanted to start a project, and they had the Neptune South Node conjunction in the, it was like in the 4,000, they wanted to open a space together, and we really had to talk through it. I was like, okay, can you really explain me the idea behind this? Like, what do you need to do? How much money? Because we were like, you know, we got this vision and we got this plan and this is going to change people's lives. I'm like, great, amazing, cool. How much money do you have to do that? So you see, with Neptune, we always need a bit of Saturn medicine, yeah? And with the North Node, this is like, yes, yeah, spiritual brotherhood, spiritual sisterhood. Uh, so there is some sort of, higher connection like here with the, you, we could have some very interesting psychic awakenings and now we got pluto pluto may be also an entire conversation because for example in evolutionary astrology pluto represents the soul that's what i'm specialized in so we have lots of theory around that but there is something about power dynamics that gets very strong in this lifetime now if Pluto is in conjunction of someone else's south node, something is lived again and needs to be resolved. Specifically here, because, you know, Pluto loves to kill things. Something needs to get to an end. It's like so, some structure as we know it. This is probably out of the karmic pool, one of the strongest the south node person need to find their own way is this gonna be hard oh yeah oh yes because pluto is gonna be there just try there is this power struggle that the couple doesn't see at first because they don't until some big transit's gonna make you notice that when is in conjunction with the north node the north node person already did the work that needed to be done so here we just can go deeper. We are ready for another evolutionary jump. So you see what's interesting here. When we're looking at Pluto, you might think it's like, oh, Pluto North in a conjunction. This might sound a bit negative. No, not in this case. Because it's just like we are giving another level of awareness and consciousness to something that has already been reached. Beautiful. And then we look at the last one. So we're just closing this topic with the node. So we Chiron, kinship, teacher-student dynamic. We Chiron and the south node, there is this tendency to repeat patterns. So we want to relate, like we relate as a catalyzer. Like there is something that has to do with shadow work. And with the north node, I mean, Chiron always is bringing this sort of guidance. But when we're having south node, north node, connection and Chiron is involved usually Chiron is the one that suffers so brings the teaching but there is also a certain level of suffering so we are here to do recalibration okay so I'm here to help you to see the light so when we're looking at this case I did this big study two years ago um I work with 100 people with relationships with like 20 couples so very quickly, I'm just going to bring you like a first example here. So let's say, oh, wow, we have a North Node Moon conjunction. But you see, when we're looking at this chart in the first place, here we're having a person that has four planets and one asteroid in the 12th house. So we're having intercepted as well. So big 12th house energy. So the question here is, the person was going through the Saturn return where we talked, um, Something that has to do with understanding your own emotions. So we're having a moon that is in the 12th house. It's in a fire sign. It's making a square with Uranus. 
Yeah. So when we're looking at this connection here, this connection may not be necessarily the easiest because we are tapping into 12th house world. So in order to understand, because also it's falling in the seventh house, so these two people are in an intimate relationship. In order to understand this connection, I really need to know what happened here. What happened with the parents when this person grew up? What is the relationship that parents had? And what is their own definition of relating with someone else? Because this person is bringing all these questions up. Then we will see there are other elements in this synastry that reminds us other things. But you see what I mean by this? So this person uh, has been like the first the big love of, uh, of their lives. And she was like, you know, I'm, what I'm feeling with this person, I never felt this for anyone before. And then when we're talking about love, it's like, okay, did you ever experience this sort of love with your mother? No, I didn't. For this, that reason. Okay. And then we just want to see how these two things are coming together. Yeah. Um, okay. So now let's talk about the vertex. How many of you are familiar with the vertex? Yeah. More of them are like, yeah, no idea. Great. So the vertex is a point. So it's not a planet. It's not a star. Um, it's... Um, in the, in the connection between the ecliptic and the prime, prime vertical, I have like 20 minutes, so I'm just going to move on from this. What is the vertex about? It's a new concept. So first of all, it's something that has to do with modern astrology. It just can be somewhere between your fifth and your eighth house. It's some sort of uh, expansion of your descendant. That's the reason why it's also called the electric descendant. This is something you can calculate on astro.com for free. Extend another chart selection. You scroll all the way down. You click on vertex. It's just going to pop up. Why is this thing is called electric descendant? It's called electric descendant because it gives you another level of understanding of the other. So it is what is unconscious within the relationship. It's a bit, mm, you know, it could give a bit this idea of relationship between the seventh and the eighth house somehow. Yeah. Um, and conjunction, you were just talking about conjunction. It's a very specific point. So the orbs are very small, maximum two degrees, no more than that. We are not going like, oh, it's seven degrees. Because mm -mm. it has to do with faith and it's about big turning point beyond your control. We use this element in two cases. Predictive astrology, when you're having transits on this specific point, some fated things can come up, but mostly in relationship astrology. The vertex is something that gets activated by something else. So this is not something that you constantly feel in your life and it's just pure faith. So all work for, for you. Just like, wait, so we're also going to have all work? Yes. Check what is the vertex in your natal chart. So the house in which is located is the events that you're drawn to in order to make some karmic evolutionary uh, jumps. The sign is the quality that you expected to bring in karmic relationship and an energy that you are going to attract a lot. When we're looking at synastries, there is a fated rom-com movie on Netflix. Oh my God, I saw her at the cafe. My life was not the same ever again. That's the vertex. So it's a portal to learn about yourself is an indicator of a magic encounter in your life and within the transits this of course could change but you see when we are looking here and you know some of you may have some just check that out what's happening with the vertex so look at this relationship we're having vertex south node on one side and vertex venus on the other when I talked to these people, they were like, you know, we, we met at this uh, summer summer retreat, like spiritual retreat. It was just, we just knew it. We just paid for an exercise and then the, that was it. 
So when there is a connection with vertex, there is something that we want to explore. So we want to explore in terms of synchronicity. Is something synchronic is happening with this person? Let's explore that. If you haven't been losing some trust and some faith in life, and then you see, oh, there is someone that is making a conjunction with my vertex. Just think with them. Because again, here we are bringing a special power. So you see, while, while with the notes, there is like a message that gets delivered and something that gets received, there is something like this. With the vertex, you're just co-creating a portal. Because it's weird for both of them. You know, it's this thing of like, ah, you can't believe what happened. Okay? So on the other hand, if you're having a friend that is having a relationship with someone that is experiencing something like this, it's a bit difficult for them to see, especially at first, if you're mentioning something that you may not like. Because they are in this, they are in this like magic phase. So in that case, we always want to look at Saturn. You know, Saturn, if we see that the other person is completely lost in this dynamic, Saturn is always providing some counter guidance. Speaking of. So Saturn in from a relationship coming perspective is telling us if we have in contracts, agreements binding dynamics, marriage, mortgage, financial obligation, no fun, but there. So we have to learn how to commit to each other. This is the other mistake that we usually make here because the person thinks, oh, great. So Saturn is bringing the teaching, the Saturn person. It's my Saturn on your Mars. So I'm the teacher, you are the student, not because the place in which Saturn is located in our chart is a place in which we don't feel we are good enough, right? It's the inner voice that says, you suck. You shouldn't do this. You're a loser. So, of course, if there is a connection here, it's not necessarily coming out of a place of inspiration. At the, be at the beginning, it's going to look like wisdom. You're like, wow, the other person, Saturn person, they have it together. Within time, hmm you will see certain things. Within time, I mean like at least six months. For example, when people want to come for relationship readings, I always, always invite them, like be together for at least six months and then we talk. Because before the six months, Saturn doesn't show up. And then Saturn shows up. Oh, I really like them because of that. And for the same reason, it could be exactly the opposite. Okay, so it's the Saturn one, they look confident, they are not. The that has to be paid in this lifetime. Saturn linear timing, this life, inner cycle, Saturn return, you are here, you are in this body, this name, this historical moment. No doubts about it. Yeah? So what we want to do is support each other. Sometimes it's doable if the rest of the sign is free. Like, yeah, your Jupiter is on my ascendant. Great. But unless there are like lots lots of things that really help it could be a bit difficult at times yeah um so you see when we're looking again at the same case that this this science is crazy so we also having this conjunction here so we're having a saturn mars conjunction so what is interesting here wow this is fated on the vertex side like venus is conjunct the dc there is this strong sense of love there is this strong sense of connection that we're having a sun in conjunction to the dc again very very beautiful very very intense in the middle of this chart though we're having this mass that feels a bit stuck and when we're looking at this chart i mean mars is part of this it's part of this kite among other things so, and we have this strong energy that we want to work with. Now, since these two people are in a sexual relationship, of course, here, you know, we have to ask it, like, how does it, how does it work? On a, also, Mars is in the fifth house, between the fifth and the tenth. And there was when there was one of the blockages, when the honeymoon phase was not there anymore. But like, you know, I would love to spend more time with my partner, but they are so busy working the whole time that I always have to create the conditions for doing things. I always feel just 
And they both felt judged for different reasons. Yeah. Another element, another element people don't talk a lot much is uh, the asteroid series. So uh, I started noticing this thing some years ago. Mm, I relocated in my life, I don't know, probably 30 times at this point, currently in the fourth house, a lot of moving. And every time I will end up like living with some friends or friends like uh, kind of hosting me and being in this familiar situation. I couldn't trace anything in the chart. I was like, oh, that's weird. What is that? And then I noticed that every single time their sun or their moon or their Venus were conjunct my series. It was literally they opened the house for me. Because series has to do with nourishment. Uh, it has to do with food. It has to do with care. It's the grandmother. It's like, it's this idea of the connection with the moon. So if the moon is our girl, Sirius is the grandma, is the southern Italian grandmother. They ask you, did you have any food? Did you have any food today? Are you going to have anything for lunch? Are you going to have anything for dinner? That's her, okay? There are some specific cases. Also, this is something you can calculate for free on astro.com. This is how it looks like. If there is a connection between Sirius and Saturn, there is a past life parental relationship that needs recalibration of some sort. It's a bit easier if in this lifetime we are incarnating in the same dynamic, but this is not what happens many times. Series with the notes. So there is something about taking care, being mama. You become like, yeah, I became mama Georgia. I have a son series conjunction, Natalie. So I'm like, this is a grandmother. This always wants to be sure that everyone feels good. Um, but again, it depends which counter kind of encounter is that. Series Pluto. Oof. This is quite intense because if we're looking at the myth of it, like Sirius and, and Addis, they had some sort of some sort of struggle going on. So when we're talking with these two, working with these two archetypes, there is something that we need to give back to the other person. So Pluto needs to give something back. There is grief that needs to experience. There is some loss that is in there. Something has to be processed, okay? Or with the IC. So there is this family dynamic that we need to heal from our past lives, but is usually quite supportive. Because, you know, Sirius is, is the caretaker, but she's also ruled by grief as well. So it's not, it's not a really, really easy archetype to deal with. But my invitation is just like, just, just calculate that in your natal chart when you're doing a sinus and you have this feeling of like this, this caretaking quality. Does it show in the chart? How do you feel about it? Is it something that is supposed to be in the relationship as main energy or not? Um, so when... Uh, we are talking with vertex and the other person vertex. If they are in conjunction because you were born at the same time, I wouldn't consider that. It's like any time we have repetition of coming things because you were born at the same time. Yeah, we just rule them out. Uh, with the orbs, uh, so with vertex, we go like with maximum two degrees. Uh, with Ceres, also three three degrees. I would I wouldn't do more than that. Um, and then we have Juno, Chiron, and the 12th house. So I just want to spend a bit more time with Juno. Juno is the asteroid of marriage. Maybe some of you are aware of it. Some others are not. It's about our ideal spouse. So when we are, so this is something that I just use when I do relationship readings, because Juno is giving us some interesting piece of information there is also, you know, when we're talking about astrology, we deal with culture as well. So my generation is a bit more, no, we don't want to get married. We just over this. Um, sometimes it's the case. Sometimes there is a conditioning or it's just a, a response to that. Like, for example, in my chart, I got North Node, Juno Conjunction. So I was like, oh, okay. I haven't seen marriage coming in my life, but it came. So here we are. Uh, so it reveals the kind of situations that can be marriage material. Do you know what is in your chart? If you don't know, extend the natal chart selection. You see here, you find all the guys we've been talking about. 
additional objects. We got Ceres and we got Juno. Okay. So and looks like this, this weird star here. Juno, Era. So we are talking about Zeus' wife, this polka, this pool thing. I mean, Zeus literally was flirting with anything that could breathe, that could move. Era was having a bit of issues with anger management. Let's put it that way. Um, so it's not a really peaceful archetype. Because, I mean, if we are looking at Juno's curriculum, be brutal. She is the protector of married women. She's the protector of marriage. So what makes you jealous? What is a deal breaker? If, let's say, because again, let's think about marriage. Or let's also think about moving in together and creating this idea of family. These are all conversations that Juno can bring up. Where we need the non-negotiable respect in relating. That's it. As simple as that. So you see here. Very interesting, this person got Juno conjunction Uranus. So um, they came to me and yeah, she was like, nope. Marriage, I'm too weird for that. Also, I'm a lesbian. So, you know, this all this all relationship between my sexuality and uh, getting married, the yada, yada, yada. When we're looking at Juno, we want to look at pretty much the same one as series. Nodes, Saturn, Pluto and Chiron. So Juno with the nodes, I mean, here there is a very strong karmic bond with the relationship in which maybe we were married in a previous lifetime, or if it's in the North node, maybe it's this one. Um, what we have in Saturn, there is something about what happened in a previous marriage. So I'm always interested here to have some conversation or to do some therapy or to do some work before actually getting married. Then we have in Juno Pluto, unsolved problems and anger and resentment from a previous lifetime so something maybe didn't go right what is this resentment about what needs to be changed in the relationship before doing the next step and chiron there was this bonding but for some reason something was not accepted or someone had to leave like we associate, we are associating the relationship with some form of pain. Now, when we're looking at this example here, very beautifully. Um, so this person is born with Jupiter in conjunction with Uranus. So if, if there is either something unusual about the, the wedding or there is something unpredictable about it, because this is the other thing about Uranus, right? It's just like, poof, it just appears. The partner Uranus is sitting on this Juno. So what happened here? They proposed. So the other part, I think they were like in Vegas or something. They did one of these this things, these magic things. And they just got married and they are super happy um, in their own specific Uranian container. So you see the Uranus could be different things. So in this case, it's like we are still seeing in some countries same-sex marriage as something Uranian, as something alternative. So this could be interpreted in different ways. Also with this conjunction, the person was a bit against that because the idea that there was no option or possibility because of the culture in which they were. Yeah? Then we got Chiron. Oof. Chiron, it's hard. I mean, I'm just not, I'm not going to sugarcoat this one. Um, because Chiron is a wound that never heals fully. You know, there are some things we could do. I think there was the title of a couple of, uh, um, like the Astrological Association Journal, I think Leeds Green wrote an article. It's like, uh, you can't really heal from Chiron stuff. It was like, whoa. And some of our colleagues were like, no, we can actually, yeah, we can process things. But in sinistry, it's really, really difficult. So when Chiron is with personal planets or past lives, wounds are triggered again. So I'm here. I'm triggered by something. I don't even know what that is. I don't know where this comes from. How do I deal with that? When we are working with the nodes, 
there are opportunities, but the thing is here, we have to accept that there is a certain level of suffering. You know, one example that I had at the end of the presentation, but I'm not going to bring that up today. Um, you have this constellation between uh, Victoria and David Beckham. And you see that, you know, they've been together for many years, but there have been all sorts of rumors. Uh, I read their biography, just like she almost committed suicide, I think, twice. She fell in this depression. There was this thing or cheating. They're still together. But it comes at a price. So the question is, how much do you want? Are you willing to pay for that? Yeah. So there are things that are unresolved. And there are things of your own childhood that got projected in the other person. It can also bring lovely, lovely teachings because, you know, when we have in current aspects in vertical relationships, student, teacher, friends, but one is older, it's a bit easier. With the loved one, mm. and then we got the last element, the 12th house. Now, the 12th house is a naturally unconscious place in the natal chart. If you have planets in the 12th house, then it's some sort of awakening. How do we awake planets in the 12th house? Transits, progression, synastry. You know, you have a planet in the 12th, you meet someone, great. That planet's fall on your 12th house and they're like, hi, we're going to put some lights here. So this is one option. There is a connection in terms of soul group because like we are divided in different groups. Um, so there are like, there is a cluster of people we usually come back with and there is a 12th house uh, dynamic. Um, and we go beyond the idea of the relationship itself. You know, there is something that at the be very beginning is not clear what that is. What is our common goal? So it's very good. 12th house, we look at the opposite house as a medicine, 6th house. How do we imagine our life, how that could look like on a daily basis? Why you would like to change? Which are the experiences in your life that you ever done that left you like feeling lost and abandoned? Which are the things that make you feel present here and now? How do you deal with your nervous system? You know, we want to bring some Virgo medicine here. Yeah. So we awakening things that can have a very positive impact if we are used to deal with our subconscious, if we are open to explore other people's ideas, if we are open in working with alternative healing modalities. Otherwise, it gets very hard because like if the communication here is poor, it gets, it gets quite, it gets quite messy. Yeah. So you see when, when we're looking at this, at this example here. So we're having these planets in the 11th falling and this once on the 12th. It's also a very interesting indicator when we are finding people that got the same like sun, for example. So there is usually a mirror here. Because it's like we we we're attracting the same of of something. Um, the other elements of attraction we have a mm, DC vertex conjunction here. We're having a North Node Venus conjunction here. So there is like lots lots of presence, but it's It's always important to see in which house they're falling. So let's say okay, I got these planets from the eleven falling in the twelfth house. I want to know what do you think, all my friends. I want to know how do you feel when we are with another group. I want to know what can you do in order to initiate things a bit more. I want to know which kind of people do you think would fit us as a couple beyond the people they already know from my past. And the 12th house person, like, you know, is falling in the 12th house of someone else. They can have a bit of an hard time because you have to think in sinistry. In our overlays, when a planet, I say this and then Jiden, I'm done, I promise. Um, so when a planet is falling in someone else's house, they are bringing their own energy, okay? So you see in this case, I mean, don't look at the planet for a second. Just think about the moon, puts, like putting a light, just bringing some of that energy to the 12th house. It's like, oh, look, I'm bringing some of my emotions in your subconscious, Oh, look, I'm bringing some of my ideas into your subconscious. And here we need to find tools. We need to find tools. Because otherwise it's, it's, it's not very easy to understand each other on a linear traditional way. Yeah? 
So these are the main elements that we want to look at when we work with past lives. Now I'm going to look at the chart. Doo -doo 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 -doo. What about Chiron close to the North Node, your own personal? I mean, while you're looking at your own natal chart, you just have to think that it's the same dynamic, but it's not triggered by an external source. It's some internal uh, is internal dynamic you have to deal with. It's a bit more complicated because it's easier to have someone else that is activating the sort of energy. I mean, we also tend to project everything on the other person. That's also the downside of it. But when when it's within you, um, yeah, there is something that you have to learn around relating because it's like if your North Node, this is for everyone. If you have any planets in conjunction with the North Node, you need this energy in order to get there. So here we need to get vulnerable around relating with others until we don't show our vulnerable side. Until and you know we look at the sign. Let's say okay, seventh house. Uh, I don't know, Chiron in Gemini. There are some things that it's very difficult for me to say when I'm relating with someone else. I feel no one's going to listen to me. And until you do the switch, the North Node is blocked. The planets that are close to the North Node that are, it's, is the team, but you can avoid them. You can ignore them. Yeah? Okay. Thank you, Georgia. First of all, I would like to formally thank you for this. Mm -hmm.